What's going on everyone? Blade55555 here and today I'm going to be presenting to you a video on how to get out of Gold League. Now I've made videos on how to improve before. Uh, one of my first videos since coming back into uh, RTS gaming or more specifically Age of Empires 4 was a video called Tips on How to Improve at RTS Games which is linked in the description below. And I did do a brief series before Ranked Seasons came out on how to get out of 1000 ELO or what I would focus on at 1100 and I think it went up to 1300 or 1400 or something like that. So I decided to kind of revisit that concept except I'm going to be focusing on where a majority of the player base lays at which is Gold League. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over what I think you should focus on and how you should go about focusing on it. Um, from AOE4World.com, I saw gold 1 to 3 was by far, if you combine this, all three of these ranks, it was by far um, the most common place where players went, which is, you know, most likely what a lot of rank a lot of players who watch streamers go to as well. So that's kind of the point of this video. Um, we are going to go over a replay, maybe even more than one, and kind of just kind of focus what I would do, focus on if I was either player um, and in general what you want to focus on as a gold league player um, so without much else to say let's step into the first one all right so this first replay that we're going to go over is going to be a classic french versus english um, i believe one of these players was gold two and the other was gold one which is kind of perfect for what i want to go over here so while we're starting um and i'm going to skip forward through this replay a bit and kind of go over some thoughts but the first thing i'd recommend if you are in gold league and having trouble getting out is work on your opening build order make sure you have the most efficient timings possible that you can get for example you don't want to get do a build where you're making um a second tc at 10 minutes into the game when you could have made it at six minutes right it just kind of hurts your overall build and if you keep doing that build you are going to hit a roadblock where you're not going to go up because your build is just really bad so that's kind of the first thing i would focus on is just get a very basic build order nothing complex um just very basic whether it's a two town center build order or an aggressive build order and you need to do that same build order regardless of what civ you play against for like until it is ingrained in your brain pretty much because if you do the same build uh, enough times it becomes like second nature and you could almost do it with your eyes closed you know the timings and all that stuff so that's what i recommend focusing on um and then you can add in other builds once you get the one down and go from there um, but those are kind of the major focuses on like for example looking at this uh, english player here we see that he put two on wood on a straggler tree um, and then he put two on gold, so it looks like he might be trying to do like a fast wheelbarrow build. But then he put his mining camp and house way back here, which makes no sense. I'm not sure why that is. So, for example, you never want to do this, right? You want to have your gold here and your house here or something like, like The house location is not as important uh, unless it's, you know, versus Mongols. But the mining camp kind of is because you want it here. It's closer to your town center. Um, if French raids, for example, you have to go all the way around to your town center instead of just be lining it this way you have to go around bam longer distance and so a knights could theoretically do damage here this is more of how you want to have a proper layouted base you know mining camp here lumber camp here and so on now i'm going to say these player the builds that i've already noticed from both these players are not efficient um for starters i'm not sure why we're putting our sheep here and i'm not sure why we have the two on wood so early because uh, it's obviously not for wheelbarrow since we're not even close. Uh, if we got wheelbarrow right now, then we wouldn't be advancing for quite a while. So it's kind of one of those those things. One thing I've noticed in Gold League is a lot of players kind of do that is they separate their resources a lot early. Um, the general rule of concept you want to follow is you want to put almost all your villagers on food and gold, and then you do it on wood after a certain amount of uh, time. For example, a common opening for French would be like eight villagers on food, three on gold, and then after that you can add a few to wood, like three or four, and then you just kind of go from there. Um, whereas this, these builds are kind of definitely a bit inefficient. There's no reason to have one villager on wood at this point in time, or you know, from the how for the length that this has been on there, um, and then only having six on food. And then they're advancing with five villagers on the landmark as well. Um, but you're going to notice a problem here, right? I'm going to 
pause it here just to showcase. So we're rushing the age up. We are we want to be aged up as soon as possible is what this French player is thinking. Here's the problem. We only have one villager on food. And we have an idle town center time because of that. So if you think about it as a player, so this is for anybody, if you are rushing something, you've got to think why. So if you're going to age two really fast with five villagers, what is your goal? Okay, without thinking about it too hard right now, you would think the goal is to get a night out, right? You want to get a night out and you want to maybe send it to your villager and try to kill a villager or two. Okay, so what's the problem we have right now? We're rushing this landmark up, yet we can't even produce villagers and we have 48 food in the bank with one villager on food. So you're going to get to the feudal age and yet you're not going to be able to make a night. Uh, as of right now, you can barely produce villagers. So this kind of is a lot of idle villager time right here for absolutely no gain whatsoever. You gain no advantage getting to feudal age quickly um, when doing something like this because you can't make a knight, villagers are not happening, um, and you're just so you're advancing fast for no reason. Like, so that's kind of the things you want to think about in general when it comes to anything. For example, if you're going fast castle, let's say you want to go fast castle knights. Okay, if you're if you advance to fast castle and you put 16 villagers on the landmark, but you can't make a knight or even a stable by the time you get to castle age, then what's the point of doing that fast castle like that? Um, it can take if it takes a while for you to get the resources to do what you need to do, and then if your opponent matches you or advances two minutes later, but he can make knights immediately and you're just starting out your first knight, then your fast castle didn't really accomplish much, right? Now that's just a very basic example, and I'm not I'm not putting much thought into the example when I'm giving it to you. So that's kind of what you want to think about here um, with almost anything in the game. For example, if you're going to make five barracks because you have a lot of wood, but let's say you only have five villagers on food. Why are you making five barracks then? You can't produce units from five barracks if you only have five on food. Um, so you just kind of want to learn to spend your resources and your villager time in a very, what's the word, uh, efficient manner. And so kind of just going by the point, as you can see, we got to a fast castle or a fast feudal age, but we can't do anything in it. We're not getting, um, can't get a knight. We have still an idle town center. We're at 11 villagers at four minutes into the game compared to our opponent who is at 18 villagers, which kind of shows the efficiency differences between them. Now, while uh, English's build is a bit inefficient um, as well with how they opened, you'll notice that they're constantly producing villagers, which by the way, I want to point out is another major focus you should have, especially at this rank. Um, I mean, this kind of shows a really good difference between two build orders and what to what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Because um, we see with constant villager productions, we're eight villagers ahead of what the French player is, which should never be the case this early in the game. It should never be the case. With that having happened, this puts English player in a very large advantage like if this was at a, a pro level game this would be almost unwinnable for french unless the english player really messed up now obviously this is again gold league so i expect these kind of mistakes and that's why we're going over this to, so that you can think about it and try to improve on those mistakes one of the things that you should always focus on is always doing constant villager production um, that's just super super important and probably one of the most if not the most important thing you could be doing at this age um, or at this ranking system, other than, of course, you also need to spend your resources, which we'll go over later. Now, as we're looking at this replay, we're going to notice the English player is doing kind of a similar inefficiency to what French is doing, right? Um, now, the four villagers age up, that's completely normal, but we have only five on food, five on wood, but we have six villagers on gold. Why do we have six villagers on gold? Um, there's not really a good meaning behind this. Um, I'm guessing it's to get upgrades as it looks like that's what immediately what they do. But in general, it's not really what you want to be doing as English this early in the game. Because we have 10 villagers on wood, 6 on gold, 5 on food. You don't need 6 villagers on gold to be able to get these uh, upgrades. You only need like 2 or 3. And then if you're going to go for a aggression, um, which obviously I, this isn't the case, um, he can't afford that. But so we go for fast upgrades, but we still have six villagers on gold. Now, typically, if you'd put six villagers on gold, it means you want to go castle quickly, which doesn't look like that's the case because of how little food we have. So it's kind of other things to think about. When you put villagers on a resource, you want to think of why are you putting them on that resource? So if you're putting six villagers on gold, 
you don't want to do it just because you're like, well, I don't know what else to do with these villagers. So I'm going to put them on gold. Generally, especially this early in the game, that's not how you want to use your villagers. You want to be very efficient with what you want to do. So as we can kind of see, we're now going to get a blacksmith. This would usually indicate that you're going to either be aggressive or your opponent's going to be aggressive and you're doing this to defend yourself. But we can see, obviously, in our perspective that we're seeing one knight come out and a second knight, but there's no like real aggression uh, in general. So we have this blacksmith, and now we're going for stone. <clears throat> and again, a lot of this video, I just want to state is going to be asking these questions because I want you as a watcher to be asking yourself these questions when you play a game. So why did we make this blacksmith at this time? Why did we spend the, the wood and the resources for a blacksmith right now, even though we don't have a single unit in production? We don't have a single longbow. We don't have any spears. We just have villagers. So it's just the thing, like this wood could be used elsewhere. Maybe you make some farms with that wood. Maybe you uh, save it for the second TC, which looks like that's what we're going to be doing here. Which begs the other question. So why did we make this blacksmith and then send three villagers to stone here at six minutes and 20 seconds in the game? And if you are one of these players, uh, I, I just picked random players. So if this is you, I hope you know that I'm not trying to make you look bad or insult you or anything. Um, this is, again, just a general view that a lot of play. I would say almost every Gold League player has this problem. So don't feel like I'm picking on you on either player here if you are end up watching this. Um, so if your goal was to go for a second TC, you typically want to have... You'd want no villagers on gold. You'd want to have all the you know villagers split between stone and wood. And we're just seeing a very typical village uh, raid here, which just a slow reaction, um, which is why we lost the villager. Which is why, by the way, French is very strong at this level, is because a lot of players can't react quick enough, whereas it's a lot easier to select a knight, right-click a villager, or even attack move into a base, and then they just kill villagers. And then you remember what we talked about earlier in this video. We talked about this gold mine here and why this is you don't want the mining camp like this. This knight right here is going to come in, and we're, instead of just getting there quicker, we have to run all the way around. Um, now, the villagers are going to live, so that's nice. But it took still had to go all the way around, which could have been very, uh, devastating. But it wasn't in this case. But anyway, so it looks like now we're throwing down two barracks. So we're spending all our wood on two barracks. This is 300 wood. Um, why are we doing two barracks when we only need one? And then we're getting melee attack and defense. Now, my assumption for this would be that they're doing this because they're going to make spearmen and then to defend uh, so that knights don't do as much damage. I get the thought process behind getting these blacksmith upgrades. I don't think it's worth the uh, resources at this point in time, especially since it looks like we're trying to get a second TC. So when doing these kind of builds, like, for example, if we look at our French player who we haven't been paying too much attention to because his build... While in it, we've already kind of gone over the inefficiencies to his build a bit, um, we kind of generally get a, a game plan of what he wants to do. He wants to raid with knights, um, and now he wants to do a little bit of aggression with archers and, uh, I'm going to guess, knights as well. A very standard type of thing. The timings are going to be very delayed than a normal, at a high level game, but that's expected at this level. Um, so, like, for example... We only have eight villagers on food, but we do are floating quite a bit. So this is fine while trying to get more villagers on wood so that you can make archers and knights at the same time. Generally, you do want four or five villagers on gold if you want to do constant knight production. I believe three is not enough, but I could be wrong on that. And then also, I kind of want to point out the reason why these are also bad spots, as I talked about earlier, is you'll notice that they're getting burned down and you can't use the town center to defend against it. If this... Mining camp was here, I believe. Well, let's see. Will it show me? Yeah, if the mining camp was here, the town center would be able to protect it. Same with the house. Um, now, generally, in this point in the game, versus French, especially one who's going knights, which all of them do, right? You should always have spearmen out a lot quicker than this. Generally, as English, the moment you get to age two, you want to already have a barracks out or close to being finished. And then you want to make a couple spearmen so that you don't you know, lose villagers to knights and you can protect your economy. Now, if that had been the case, this wouldn't have been lost anyway, but just giving a small example of why this placement does matter. Okay, so we're just going to kind of go forward a little bit more. And we're going to see the spearmen come out. 
they almost killed the scout, but not quite. Um, and now you're going to notice that we're floating a lot of resources, right? We have 800 wood, 585 stone, but we have not started our second TC. And this is kind of why I always say you want to focus on a build order and get that down because these kind of timings are very important. Um, now, obviously at this level, as I, I probably said many times already, timings in this aren't as important as at a high level game. But if you can get those timings down, you'll find yourself ranking up a lot quicker um, because your opponents aren't doing the efficient timings, right? Like so in a pro game, and again, I use pro because that's just a good example. Uh, at nine minutes and 30 seconds, we could have a lot of archers and longbows and this French player would be dead because he's only got two knights or three knights and two archers at nine minutes and 38 seconds into the game. He has no second town center and he's got no, like, so he's got very small military um, and he is floating a little bit of resources. So he would have just died to almost any aggression by the English player if the timings were at a, you know, at a, what they should be. Um, so that's kind of a, that's why I say getting your build order, get a good build order and doing it correctly could be enough to get you all the way to platinum and maybe even diamond, depending on how well you're executing the build and, uh, your follow-ups. So we're going to see here that we're just floating resources. And this is kind of the second point I'm going to bring up now. One, constant villager production. Two, uh, a good build order that you can that you practice until you can do it without thinking and then three you want to focus on spending your resources you don't want to be floating a thousand wood at 10 minutes into the game especially for when you're not really doing anything um, we just have economy management here and this doesn't require high APM to do by the way I do see players uh, who always say man I lost because I didn't have enough APM and I just want to tell you, especially at this level of play, APM, or for those who don't know what that means, actions per minute has is not the reason you lose. I promise. There are people who play at the top 50, top 30, who are very slow compared to their uh, a lot of other high level players or pro players. And like a good example, if you have been watching any pro professional Age of Empires 4 play, you might recognize the name Don Artie. If you ever watch his stream, he does not spam. <clears throat> he is a very slow player in terms of his APM, yet he's in the top 50. Because in Age of Empires especially, a lot of your wins come down to how you use your... your, your how you play, I should say. For example, your unit composition, spending your resources, uh, and decision making. They are far more important than being able to spam around the map going, oh my god, here's knights here, here's this, oh, I'm moving units here. Like, That's just an example, but that's kind of what I want to go with here is... It's very important and your APM does not matter. So if you're one of those players who thinks, man, if I was faster, I could be in that Platinum League... You need to stop thinking that way because that's not why you're you're struggling. You're struggling because your build orders are going to be inefficient or you're floating resources. Um, in this game and specifically, right, this second town center, if our goal was to go for a quick second town center, we could have had this down five minutes and 40 seconds ago. If our goal was to go fast castle, we could have been castle age two minutes and 20 seconds ago. I think it's eight. I think it's eight. 20 or 8 30 that you can be aged up as english if you go for a, a fast castle um, with farms so if you think about that i could be castle i could be playing as english here against this english player and i could be castle aged by you know about 8 30 i could have two tcs and i'd have more economy than my opponent be just because i would have had my second tc a lot sooner so with this wood, what I would have done, and whenever you start noticing your floating resources, is you got to just know what you want to spend it on, or at least think about it. So in this case, is English. What should you do if you're if you see, you look at your resources, you're like, wow, I'm floating 600 wood right now. Spam down farms. Throw down a round of eight farms here. There's no reason not to make a mill and put eight more farms around it. Spend that wood. And then if you notice you're floating food and you're not saving for imperial age, and you're not making units. Start making units. There's no reason not to use your resources unless there's a specific reason. If you're going fast castle, right? Obviously, you want to float food and gold because that's how you get castle age quickly. But if you're just floating it for no reason, 
then you want to focus on spending those resources. Um, it's just super important. And that's another reason why players can or struggle to rank up at this level of play. If you did a smooth build order and you just spent your resources, you can probably get to diamond and maybe even conquer one off just that alone. Now, maybe not conquer a one nowadays. I have heard that the competition there has gotten a bit uh, harder to do or harder to get. Uh, I'm conquer three for those who aren't aware. So for me, I haven't been at this low level uh, in Age of Empires four because I've kind of been a competitive RTS player for a long time now. I think it's um, like 13 years or 14 years or something. So for me, I don't really ever get this low. Um, and I hope people don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying that to brag because it's not something to brag about. I'm just saying it as more of a, I may be wrong on what I'm saying a little bit at these, when, especially when it comes to getting to conquer one. Um, but diamond for sure. I know if you were to do a smooth build order and spend your resources efficiently, you would get to diamond easy peasy. Um, so let's kind of go forward and I, I've been focusing a lot on this English player just cause it's been a little bit easier for me to focus on. Um, I mean, if we go by the French player, it's kind of the same thing. We're at 12 minutes into the game. We only have, let's just do this the easy way. We only have five knights, four archers. We're not even close to castle age. Uh, we don't have a second TC. We're just now getting our blacksmith. And we have 10 villagers on wood for, um, and we're making one night every once in a while. And we have a lot of idle time on our archery range. There's no reason to have that ever. Uh, if your plan is to be aggressive, which I think is the general game plan for purple here, you want to be always making units out of your production building, spending your resources and not floating them. Because if you have build a huge army, so let's just go into the, the reverse here, right? If our French player had done a, the correct uh, a build order to make, because at this point in the time of the game, you should have at least two to three archery ranges and like two stables, and you should be able to pump out a ton of archers and knights if that's your game plan. If we had done that correctly at this point in the game, English player would be dead because now they're going three TCs at 13 minutes, but they have like 10 spearmen and that's it. To give you perspective, if you are going for a three TC town center build, you can have three town centers done, uh, your third town center starting between seven and eight minutes, depending on how, you know, sometimes how your resources spawn and how efficient you are and how rating goes. In a perfect game, you should be able to get down between seven and 7.30, um, unless I'm mistaken, maybe even a little quicker, but I'm not sure on that. Whereas we're just now getting our third town center at 13 minutes into the game. Um, so, And that's, and that's kind of just what I, I just want to go over on this game. I don't really know what else I can go over here because I feel like I've really hammered in uh, a lot of things I would recommend focusing on, like spending your resources and the build orders especially. But we're going to kind of fast forward now a little bit. We're going to see the French players now starting to raid a little, getting some villager kills. Um, the third town center finishes. And we see the English player economy. We're at 46 villagers. The French player's at 34. Uh, the village should honestly probably be a little bit bigger, but um, that's not the big important factor. And then we're going White Tower here, which is fine. If you're going to do a three town center opening like this, I think this is the best way to go about it. Although personally, I prefer two TCs into Fast Castle with a council hall than going for White Tower. Um, but that's just me. But this generally is a uh, safe landmark. Now, I am going to go over this a little bit because, again, this is what I was talking about earlier thinking about what you're doing right so we're aging up with the white tower the thought process here would be okay i have three town centers already i don't need a fourth that's correct by the way you do not need four town centers two so i'm going to go the white tower which is going to protect me if he decides to be aggressive okay awesome now when placing the white tower it is important to where you place it and now why am i going to talk about this because this placement is really not that good of a spot the Thought process behind it's fantastic, but the execution is not because all the French player has to do, let's say they have an army and they're going to punish this. All they have to do is go back here. We can deny the gold. We can deny all these farms. This only covers this one farm. And in reality, it really doesn't because archers here will just kill them. So we could get, we can deny the whole food economy, the gold economy, and the wood economy. This only protects this, this little tree right here. So 
this the white tower placement here is actually not good what you generally want to do if you're going to do something like this is put it where it's going to protect most of your economy so in this game with how our economy is already situated which by the way i do want to point out um, just because i feel like i'm being very negative and i'm trying not to point it that way is i do love the farm placements from our english player here you want to have your farm placements in something like this because not only are, I mean, not only does it look nice, but it's also protected with your town centers. Because um, if you put your farms up here and your opponent attacks, well, that's the first thing they're going to see. So your opponent to disrupt this has to go back here. Um, so it's a very good spot to place it. Now, with that being said, this white tower would have been better placed here um, or even probably better placed like here or here because that, that would protect the most of your economy. If you put it here, right, it protects most of your wood economy, or let's say you put it here, it protects most of your wood economy, because this has a big radius, by the way. So if you put this here, this protects this whole wood line, it protects your gold, and it protects like most of your farms. So the only attack pattern that the French player could do in this case is go this way and attack this list of farms right here, because uh, I'm pretty sure this would be vulnerable. And right here, this town center would also be vulnerable, but it's also vulnerable here, right? So if you put it here, or even here, or somewhere over here, you protect your wood line, you protect your gold, and you protect most of your farms. So that way, if French attacks, you're fine. You're not going to have an idle economy, and you can still pump out units. So it's kind of a thing. Whenever you're going to do a strategy, whether it's like this or something else, always think to yourself, why am I putting it here? Like, so... If I was going to put it here, I'd think to myself, what, what is my goal with putting the white tower here to protect myself? But what does this protect? It protects two town centers, your barracks, your art, your council hall and your blacksmith. That's pretty much it. So just simple things to think about when you uh, when you play something like this. And we're already seeing that value, though. It did get these knights who were not expecting that white tower to be there. But that doesn't negate what my point is. Um, and so now we're going to kind of just talk about why I say uh, the third point I talked about in this video is the wood gathering rate and why I think wood is or uh, why it's very important to always um, spend your resources. We have 2000 wood, 1500 food, and we have only 85 supply right now. We should have like four to five archery ranges, three to five barracks. And be pumping out archer like longbow spears if that's the unit composition we want to go against French. You don't generally want to go knights because their knights are far better than yours in Castle Age. Um, not only do they heal, a lot of French players go for the uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but not the Council Hall, the one that gives you early bloodlines in the nowadays. So you don't generally go knights against French. You generally go a more ground composition because again, their knights are just better in every way and they have more damage, more health, and they heal. So if we spent our resources correctly, we could be, we should be maxed out or close to it. And then this is what you can do if, when you get this part down, when you get to spending your resources down correctly, you can literally select your units, close your eyes, attack move and you don't even have to micro your units because at this level of play micro is not something you should be focusing on this is something i've gone over in the video in the description that i talked about earlier do not worry about micro micro is not something you should be doing at this level of play because that is not your focus you can be the best micro person in the entire world but if you only have three knights and 11 archers and your opponent has 50 longbowmen I mean, doesn't matter how well you micro, you're going to lose the fight. You can't, you can't beat that. We could have 20 archers here against 20 men at arms. <clears throat> and obviously the men at arms win, but let's pretend a hundred spearmen versus 20 archers. What's going to win? The spearmen are going to win. You can be the best micro in the world, but spearmen eventually will, will whittle this down because a hundred spearmen to 20 archers. Easy win for the spears because you don't, you're not microing, by the way. So you're, you're just a moving. And then every time you lose a spear, you have more on the way because you're focused on spending your resources and not microing your units. <clears throat> now, that's not to say micro doesn't become important, <clears throat> but that's just not till later uh, as you rank up. So once you get down constant villager production, spending your resources, and... Uh, 
and a good build order, that's when you can start mixing in micro into your gameplay. Because when you get those three down, you will you will skyrocket in rating. You will just you will be like, wow, I can't believe that focusing on just those three things has got me from gold all the way to whether it's platinum or diamond. And then and then you start adding micro to the mix because if you've already got it in your brain to spend your resources, your build order, and always make villagers you don't need to worry about improving that anymore because your your mind's already got it. Now, of course, to put this out there, no matter how good of a player you are, whether you're BC Cutie, Marine Lord, even they float resources. Because in a game like Age of Empires, it is impossible to have perfect macro. So <clears throat> while it is something you'll still want to improve, even though I just said a moment ago that your brain remembers, it is still something you're going to improve because there's going to be a lot more going on as you get higher in the ranks and you get better and better and start doing adding other things. But for this point in your in your play style, if you are in Gold League, focus on those three things and I promise you, you will get out of Gold League really quick. Um, just need to focus on them. And then we're just going to kind of fast forward here. <coughs> there's not really too much else to go over. I think I've kind of hammered down the three things that on how to get out of Gold League. I don't even think I'm going to go over another replay. I think this game was a really great example of what I want to talk about. It showed exactly what I wanted to uh, discuss. Because again, look at how many resources we have. We're floating all these resources, and now we're going Imperial. But we could have won this game probably five minutes ago if we spent all that resources and just attack moved. I'm mean, just to kind of go further into it. 11 archers, 3 knights, 2 two crossbows because i can't say the name versus <clears throat> 10 longbows 38 spearmen what do you think is going to win the fight i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a spoiler this would win the fight with zero micro just attack move and you're going to kill this easy um so i'll just fast forward this though um, but see now they're kind of starting to do it but this should have been done a long time ago the sooner you start doing these kind of things the sooner you're going to see yourself rank up <coughs> and I mean, this is kind of a good example, almost like if this were done sooner, is because we're going to see that we are about to be 200, 200, and our French player is at 100 food or supply, food, whatever you want to call it, and they're now going Imperial Age, but they're just going to die to this attack. Um, so yeah, we're just going to watch this real quick just so you can kind of see. Now, I want you to, to look that there wasn't really much micro there, um, and that was a very inefficient fight, but we still took out most of the French army, and that's with under a keep and a red palace. I mean, they still won the fight. It's just now they have to worry about these two, which have cannons. Um, but yeah, you're going to kind of see <clears throat> it's just attack move at this point. There's really nothing the French can do, and then that's that. So... That is the only replay I'm actually going to go over. I think that replay was perfect in what I wanted to showcase on how to get out of gold. I hope for any of you Gold League players out there that you can put these into action and maybe update me on either my stream or in the YouTube comments on whether it helped you or if you need further assistance. So um, if you want to catch me live, I do stream Monday through Fridays on twitch.tv slash blade55555. Um, I am very interactive with chat. I also uh, talk and commentate my thought process and answer a bunch of questions when asked. If you have any YouTube ideas, please feel free to put them in the comments as well. I'm always looking for ideas on videos to do. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.